Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Kate Ellis, and I'm the president and CEO of GLAAD. I'm also a proud parent and a voter annually or whenever there is an election. And that's what we're talking about today. 2022 is an election year, and so much is at stake. So we've got a lot to talk about. Before we get into today's discussion, I want to let everyone know about glad.org slash vote. It's a great resource to check your voter registration status, register, and make a plan to vote with pride this year. I'm so excited about today um, because I get to introduce a friend of mine um, and a colleague, Stacey Stevenson, who is the CEO of Family Equality. Hello, Stacey. Hey, Sarah Kate, how are you? So my family moved from Texas to DC, and that was driven by all of the anti- LGBTQ plus rhetoric that we're hearing from state leadership. And frankly, I could no longer live in a state where state leadership calls my son's parents abnormal. I mean, it's it's literally, Sarah Kate, part of their, their 2022, 2023 legislative platform that homosexuality is an abnormal condition. So I could no longer live in a state um, that called my, my son's parents abnormal. I can no longer live in a state um, that is promising to pass something more comprehensive than, than Florida's Don't Say Gay. So we decided to, to move. And with all of the anti-trans legislation, you know, we are seeing many families flee their home states. And we at Family Equality decided, what do we do or what can we do? Because we don't see this ending anytime soon. And what we've done is we've created a, a crisis hub that we call Path 2, the number two, Family Equality. And Path to Family Equality truly is going to evolve into a future crisis hub. So when people have to flee in a moment's notice and go to a state like California, or when people cannot leave and flee because they have to stay in place for whatever reason, but they need to find safety in place, that's where Path to Family Equality comes in. And we're continuing to iterate with our, our tech team um, and create the next iteration. But what we see this as being, unfortunately, is a future crisis set for people to go to because we don't see this legislation, this anti-trans legislation ending anytime soon against our trans youth. Well, thank you for that, Stacey. And thank you for the path to family equality because unfortunately, I think it's gonna be uh, really useful um, in the future. Sadly, you know, speaking of so, you know, family equality got really involved in Florida when the um, don't say gay or trans bill came out. Um, and, and you've really put a stake in the ground there. Can you tell me about that? What inspired that? How does that um, relate to your mission? And, and what are you trying to achieve there? Yeah, so, you know, schools um, has really been a part of our mission for quite some time, uh, particularly our children's experience in schools and how children with same-sex parents experience the school system. When we heard about Don't Say Gay and the uh, prevention of children talking about their families or the prevention of um, uh, or making it illegal for a child who's trying to come out to talk about their own sexuality, we knew that this was something that was certainly connected to our mission and really impacted um, our, our families and was going to impact our families. And so we, we joined this lawsuit with Equality Florida. And um, it really was on the basis of that don't say gay is unconstitutional uh, and it infringes on freedom of speech. Uh, unfortunately, that lawsuit was just dismissed uh, just a, a couple of, of weeks ago. And it was based on that the, the judge who uh, ruled said that uh, we didn't have legal standing. So back to voting, here's something really interesting. I, I find this a fascinating fact. We've done a lot of work at GLAAD in getting our community registered into the polls. And in 2020, 93% of registered LGBTQ folks showed up and voted. That's astounding. Um, we're in a midterm year. We know numbers fall off during a midterm year. We know how powerful the LGBTQ block is, and we know it's only growing. How are we going to reach everyone we need to in order to exercise all of that power? And how 
do we keep that at 93 or even surpass that? How do we keep the momentum? You know, I feel as though yeah. each year we keep saying, this is the most important election. This is the most important election. And I keep saying every year for the next decade is the most important election. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Well, I think doing what you and I are doing right now, right? And getting something like this out to the masses. Uh, I think that we're not reaching everyone. And I believe that people need to truly understand what's at stake. Like our community, LGBTQ plus people need to understand what's at stake. So how do we articulate to people what is truly at stake? I mean, even if you're not married and if you don't have a family, LGBTQ plus rights as a whole are at stake. So how do we get that message out to people? I think that's how you get people out to vote is do you know what's at stake? Do you know what this means to your future? Do you know what this means if you decide to have a family one day or if you do want to get married someday, even if you're not? I think there has to be a way to not articulate with fear, but to also let people know that we have a lot to lose. We truly have a lot to lose. Like our entire existence as a community can change when the matter of votes and people need to know that. Our entire uh, freedoms that we've just, I think sometimes um, maybe even uh, grown so accustomed to that we think that they can't be taken away from us. People need to understand that this is a true threat. This is not, um, uh, this is not a, a way to just to, to fear monger. This is truly a threat. Thank you. Thank you, Stacey Thank you. from Family Equality. There is still time to register to vote in a number of states, so please be sure to check out your registration status at glad.org slash vote and go to familyequality.org where you can find good information on so many pressing in issues and what we can all do to address the rights of LGBTQ families. We'll see you at the polls. Vote with pride.